There are links to my Twitch, Twitter, and tip video playlist below. Now before I move on to the actual tips themselves, I need to go over a few things. Don't expect to get a lot of kills or action on support. If you are playing support or support operator, don't expect to drop 15 kills in a ranked game. It's just not what you're meant to do. Number two, support is one of the hardest roles to play in Rainbow Six Siege, in my opinion. I'll give you an example why. Most of the time, you're gonna be the, one of the last people to die on the team because if you're Thermite, you're most likely gonna have Diffuser, which is something I'm gonna go over in a little bit. But if you are alive with the Diffuser, you're most likely gonna need to plant. So either your mid plant or you got nitroed or smoked or denied on the plant or you're even in a post plant situation you'll find yourself in situations where there's a post plant or your mid plant and people around you are dying which leaves you in a clutch situation whether you're alone or you have another person with you that is alive so in order for you to fulfill the support role you might go two minutes and 30 seconds of a round playing extremely passive droning and only getting off the drone to use your utility and then going in a post plant situation trying to clutch a 1v4 or a 1v3 whatever it may be but you're in these situations that you have to clutch and the third thing that i would like to go over is the basics of droning so the four basic things of droning is you drone breach drone plant that's the four basics now to break these each down individually you might notify a random or someone in discord that you're playing with hey i'm gonna drone you in to this room so you pre-place your drone there outside and then you drone them in now once that person and your drone gets the map control that you need in order for you to safely enter the building you then enter the building which is step two you breach a hatch or a wall that you need to get open in order to get give you advantages to sight. And then you get right back on your drone. You drone sight, give intel on where holes might be, punch holes, bullet holes, player utility, player positioning, whatever you can give your team in order to give as much intel so they feel comfortable pushing sight. Now, once you get that intel on sight, then you can try to make and execute in order to plant. Now that those are out of the way, I'm gonna move on to tip one, which is the most important tip on this list. You need to understand how to drone properly. I'm not gonna go into depth with this. I've already made a tip video on how to drone. There'll be a link in the description, but I will say one thing about droning. If you treat your drone like it's your life entering the building, then you will gather a lot more intel about player positioning and overall intel, just because you're actually capitalizing on your drone. You'll see a lot of people just drive their drone into a room and it gets shot immediately. They might have pinged a Jaeger that's roaming, but by that point, the Jaeger might be two, three, eight, even maybe four rooms away. He can just sprint across the map. It doesn't really matter at that point. That information is useless. So if you treat your drone as if it dies, you die, then you'll find yourself becoming a lot more successful on winning games, winning rounds, and not dying as much. Tip number two, be vocal on support in order to compromise for not getting kills. Now, if you are playing a support role or a support operator, you need to make a compromise in order for you not getting those kills, so you give that intel instead. It's a great balance. So this goes back to tip number one, how I was saying, if you gather more intel, it's better. Then for tip number two, if you're actually being vocal and specific with that intel, you and your team has a lot better chance of winning that round. Tip number three, what operators are support operators? So. To go over the three basic roles of Siege, you have an Entry Fragger, a Flex, and a Support Player. An Entry Fragger is anyone who who is playing an Ash, a Zofia, Buck, or a Sledge. Anyone who really isn't necessary for winning the round. Yes, it might hurt your team a little bit when an Ash or a Zofia dies with full utility, but they're not necessarily needed to win the round. You have the Flex role, which can be anyone from a Nomad, Gridlock, Jackal, IQ. And then you have the support operators, which are all three of the hard breachers, Thermite, Hibana, Maverick, and then you have Thatcher in there as well. So if you're playing any of those four operators that I just listed, then you should be adopting the support role during that round. Tip number four, don't be afraid to make a play. Now to give a little context to the video that I'm about to play, on my team, I am primary IGL and support on attack. So now that I've given that context, I'm going to play the clip. Okay, what smoke is hard hard left? Okay, there's two on the either side of bar door. This maestro's hard right, smoke is hard left of bar door. You can kill this maestro if you swing vault. Okay, he's behind bar now. Yeah, yeah. I Fuck. Him in the head, nothing. He's 20 HP. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have to push plane here. Give me a second, give me five seconds. Okay. We're getting smoked off. 
Really King's starting is clear. Okay, can you drone plane? Yeah, I can do it. No hold, hold my drone tent. I'm gonna peek this maestro. Plane's clear. Plane's clear. Uh, I'm trying to get maestro again. I'm holding yeah. it. I don't see He's behind right? the bar. He's middle of the bar. He's just crouching. Oh, I got. Is he dead? Where? Hey, one came from. Maestro uh, behind bar. Maestro's dead. Down behind bar. He's down behind. Okay, bar. He's down behind okay bar. that's smoke. Yo, uh, uh, nine, Holy nine. nine. One, one up. Yes, good uh, shit, man. Bro, I can't see. Got my screen. What? So in that clip you saw me droning a Zofia in a vault on Villa, I was calling out a maestro and a smoke as accurately as I could. I told the Zofia, if you peek this maestro now, it will be a free kill. Now, it was just unfortunate timing. The maestro had changed positions and the Zofia had peaked and it ended up being in maestro's favor just because of unfortunate timing. So now that that Zofia had died, I had told that person to get on my drone so I can peek then. So he was on my drone. He was giving me intel on the maestro behind bar. I downed the maestro and then I know the smoke is in the corner to my right. So I peeked the smoke. And while this was happening, we had a third player on the map somewhere, which which was the Jaeger flanking up red stairs and I noticed that both my teammates had died so I knew where the Jaeger was based on my teammates dying and the sound propagation of Jaeger's gun. Now take this tip with a grain of salt. Yes you can make a play on support but you always shouldn't do it. I'm not saying in the first 30 seconds you drone a room into sight and you see it's clear and you're on thermite and you just jump in the room. That's not what I mean by making a play. What I mean by making a play is you use your utility first and then you make said play. It's not the other way around you should always use your utility first no matter how many people are dying because that's the whole point of you playing support you're not playing support in order to get kills if you're playing support then you would be playing a different operator but if you're playing a support role then you're playing it for the utility so just keep that in mind when i do say this tip number five take the diffuser as a support operator or player nine times out of ten when you're on a thermite or a thatcher you're most likely going to be planting so don't let someone in discord that you're playing with or a random in your solo queue lobby to take diffuser if you're on Thermite, Hibana, Maverick, Thatcher, whatever it is, you should probably take Diffuser so you know that you have control of it. Now let's say you didn't take Diffuser and an entry fragger dies with it in the building. Whoever killed that entry fragger with Diffuser now knows they have Diffuser control. And yes, you could go guns blazing and try to win the round, but the chances of that happening is pretty low just because the defenders know they have Diffuser control by that point. So they're going to try to not take as many gunfights as they can. So this is why you should try your hardest to get into a habit and grabbing the Diffuser. Tip number six, don't be afraid to IGL people into what you need. Now this might sound self-centered, but it's really not. If you have a little bit of experience, and by experience I mean, let's say 500 hours in ranked. Now there's a difference here. You could have 500 hours in the game, but do you have 500 hours in ranked? There's a big difference there. Because let's say, oh, I can IGL, but all you do is play casual, then you don't have experience. You have no competitive edge at all. You might ask yourself, what do I mean by IGL? If you've never heard of IGL, it's an abbreviation for in-game leader. It's basically someone who is making sure everyone's doing their right job, taking the map control that they need, positioning people in the right spot so you don't get flanked or killed from a specific staircase or doorway, using their utility that you think you see fits. Now, don't be discouraged away from being an IGL. It takes time and practice, so the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Tip number eight, don't be the first person to die. Now, this goes back to don't be afraid to make a play, the tip that I just gave previously, and now I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on this specific tip. So this tip goes from all the way from when you spawn in to the end of the round. You'll see a lot of the times unexperienced players, they'll be playing a Thermite or a Thatcher or anyone that's really needed and they'll just run out of spawn and die and be the first kill off a of spawn peak. I've seen it too many times with unexperienced players. So let's say you're playing Thermite. You spawn in, sit and spawn for a good three to five seconds. Allow your entry fraggers to go before you, face check the windows and then you leave behind the cover that you're on now if you want to take this a step further if your drone is in spawn you can leave your drone outside check the windows and doors and then you can leave spawn but just make sure that you are not the first person to die use your drones don't over peak and just don't die tip number eight make sure that thatcher and hibana or thermite form a buddy system in order to breach the wall now from the moment you pick a spawn all the way until the hatcher wall is open they should be together now you might think it's stupid that i'm saying that thatcher 
should spawn with the with the hard breacher but if thatcher doesn't it takes a good 20 to 30 seconds in order for the thatcher to rotate to the wall to help thermite get the wall open time is one of the most valuable things in rainbow six siege and that time being eaten up just by a player rotation is really detrimental to the round itself the faster you get the wall or hatches open the faster you can get intel and the faster you can plant so make sure that thermite hibana or thatcher should be together until they breach whatever needs to be breached and then once that happens then the thatcher can part ways and use his emps for ads's or evil eyes or whatever it may be but until then they should try to stay as close as possible i hope you guys enjoyed the tip video if you have any other suggestions that you would like to see me make for tip videos leave me a comment below possibly consider subscribing hitting the like button again my twitch twitter and tip video playlist is down below if you are looking for different tip videos and topics i highly suggest you go check some of them out i put a lot of time into these videos i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next one